In today's video, we'll be looking at the drug gabapentin and its potential link to hair loss. Could gabapentin actually cause your hair to fall off, or is it just another case of unfounded internet rumours spreading like wildfire? Stay tuned for the definitive answer. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who were worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. If you are new, please make sure to hit subscribe if you want updating on any of the latest hair loss news or any breakthroughs that we find out about. If you're personally watching this video on gabapentin because you're worried about your hair loss, then do make sure to click the link in the description to take the Hair God Hair Loss Quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss, and then you'll receive free, personalised expert advice on how to regrow healthy hair. Now guys, without any further delay, let's dive straight into it. Gabapentin and hair loss. What is gabapentin? Well, gabapentin is a drug that was developed in the 1970s for the treatment of epileptic seizures. As the name suggests, gabapentin was an attempt to mimic the action of a neurotransmitter called GABA. Just in case you have never heard of a neurotransmitter before, it is simply a chemical substance that cells in our central nervous system use to communicate with each other. It was well known, even in the 1970s, that drugs that mimic the actions of GABA can be successful in controlling seizures. After a long process, the drug was approved by the FDA and brought to the market by the drug company named Pfizer in 1993. Its brand name was Neurontin. Now, to say that Neurontin was a commercial success for Pfizer would be an understatement. The company initially expected to sell around $500,000 worth, but in only a few years, the sales of the drug surpassed $1 billion. The reason for this wild success? Well, doctors and patients soon discovered that though the drug was formally licensed for seizures, it did work very well in a number of other conditions, and most notably neuropathic pain. This is a chronic type of pain arising from damage to the nerves. Gabapentin is also commonly used in the treatment of migraines, hot flashes in menopausal women, anxiety disorders, insomnia, and even bipolar disorder to name a few. The drug's patent expired in 2004, meaning that you can now source a number of cheap generic versions of the chemical. All versions are for oral administration only. Now, part of gabapentin's success owes precisely to the fact that it has an excellent safety profile. It is well tolerated by the majority of patients and side effects are generally limited in frequency and severity. The main side effects are drowsiness and dizziness. So, what about hair loss? Well, as of 2009, after more than 15 years on the market, there were only two confirmed cases of hair loss linked to treatment with gabapentin. The first case was a patient who received gabapentin as part of his anti-seizure medications. The patient developed hair loss within two months of going on gabapentin, and the doctors concluded that this was linked to the drug. The second reported case was of a 28-year-old woman who was prescribed gabapentin for the treatment of neuropathic pain. After a week of treatment, she began to notice substantial hair shedding and patches of alopecia became evident. Her doctors gave her a series of tests before eventually attributing the likely cause of the hair loss to gabapentin. The treatment was promptly discontinued and the woman's hair started to grow back within two months. So guys, these were both medical case reports. A case report is when a doctor finds one of his patient's story so unusual and interesting that he actually takes the time to write it up and submit it to a medical journal as a brief article. Doctors don't write case reports for things that are expected to happen. They don't even write case reports for known but relatively unusual occurrences. Doctors are very busy people and they don't want to be wasting their own or their colleagues' time. We'll get back to the case reports in a minute, but first, what do Pfizer themselves say about gabapentin and hair loss? Well, in the package insert, hair loss is not even listed as a separate side effect but only as one of the symptoms in patients who will be allergic to gabapentin. These patients can also experience severe swelling of the face and lips, as well as skin rashes. But as I said, this is really an acute and reversible allergic reaction and not hair loss per se. So time for our verdict then. The one word answer to the question, does gabapentin cause hair loss? Well, it's no. If you want a slightly longer answer, that would be almost certainly not, unless you were very, very unlucky. Guys, the chances of this drug causing your hair to fall off are so minimal, it is not even worth worrying about. We are talking here about two confirmed cases of hair loss for a drug that is prescribed over 40 million times a year in the US alone. Furthermore, there is no plausible biological mechanism through which gabapentin could affect the hair. 
If I had to guess, I would say that part of the reason behind the hype about gabapentin and hair loss is to do with the fact other anti-seizure drugs, and particularly valproic acid, are associated with an increased risk of alopecia. Furthermore, there is no plausible biological mechanism through which gabapentin could affect the hair. If I had to guess, I would say that part of the reason behind the hype about gabapentin and hair loss has to do with the fact that other anti-seizure drugs, and particularly valproic acid, are associated with an increased risk of alopecia. As many as 1 out of 10 patients who are on valproic acid will develop some degree of hair loss, but this is not the case with gabapentin. So guys, that's a wrap for today, but now it's your turn. I want to know about your experiences with gabapentin. Have you taken it and were you concerned that it might impact your hair? Till next time, this has been Leon from HairGuard.com.